Ladies and gentlemen, a few days ago, I asked you in the community tab of this channel, should we review Van Weezer by Weezer? And as of this recording, a staggering 83% of you said, yes, fuck yes, do it immediately, or I'll burn your house down. Okay, I might be exaggerating a little bit there, but the basic math doesn't lie. You want to talk about Van Weezer, so fuck it. Let's talk about Van Goddamn Weezer. Van Weezer is the 15th studio album from American alternative and pop rock crew Weezer, and their second album of 2021, following the critically acclaimed OK Human. I've always had a pretty weird relationship with Weezer, partially because at this point in 2021, the band is essentially a giant fucking meme, but more importantly because Weezer have, quite possibly, one of the most inconsistent discographies of any rock band ever. It seems that for every Blue Album, or Pinkerton, or Maladroit, they release a Pacific Daydream, or a Make Believe, or a Teal album. OK Human was definitely a step back in the right direction. I would go as far as to argue it is their most creative and entertaining album, not just of this modern era of Weezer, but possibly in Weezer's entire discography. But considering the band's track record, it's still hard not to be genuinely puzzled and concerned when Weezer announces that they're going to release a heavy metal arena rock style album inspired by the likes of Kiss, Van Halen, Black Sabbath, and Metallica. Produced and billed as a tribute to the hard rock and heavy metal of River Cuomo's youth, the album sports guitar-driven riff-centric numbers with gang vocals and big Eddie Van Halen-esque guitar solos, chunky breakdowns, some heavier, dare I say even thrashier parts, lyrics about rock and roll fantasy and escapism, about being a teenager and dreaming of being a axe-slinging rock and roll warrior touring the world, fucking women, doing drugs, making millions of dollars in cash. The album very intentionally and almost unapologetically outright panders to nostalgia, to the boomer-esque mindset that rock was better back in my day. The album even sports lyrics that more or less boil down to remember when we were hot and young and listened to Aerosmith? Those were the good old days. Which does make this remarkably fucking cheesy, even in its strongest moments. But... All that aside, credit where it's due, Weezer have musically concocted something that is genuinely very sincere and enjoyable. Something that does bear the spirit, the heart of 70s and 80s rock and roll, and meshes it with the more modern melodies and production that we would expect of Weezer. The first half of the album in particular is a genuinely really fun little hard rock roller coaster. All the Good Ones, for instance, really does feel like a classic kind of Weezer radio rock hit at the very core, even resembling their 2005 hit Beverly Hills at some points, albeit here it's much more metallic, much more upbeat, reminds me a lot of like late 80s Def Leppard, giving it that classic 80s hard rock shine. You've also got the end of the game, which is where the band's Van Halen influence becomes transparently clear if it somehow wasn't already sporting some very juicy, sleazy riffs, a finger-tapped guitar solo in the very introduction, which itself intentionally appears to hearken to Eruption, which in turn paves the way for, hands down, without question, the strongest chorus on the entire album. I challenge you not to sing along to this after multiple listens. I fucking challenge you. There are parts of Hero and I need some of that where the band gets so trapped within their own nostalgia, within their own memories of their youth and their dreams of being rock stars and superheroes, that it does start to feel pretty corny, but it still feels really sincere at the same time, and more importantly, the songs are still really well constructed. I Need Some of That in particular is another one of the catchiest cuts on the record, very much on par with the aforementioned end of the game. 
Where things really begin to fall apart would be shortly after beginning of the end. From here on out, the album just kind of fumbles along, occasionally introducing a cool riff or a cool lyric or a cool hook, but never quite developing it, never quite fleshing it out into anything especially substantial. And at times, there's even a cluelessness and laziness to the music that is pretty startling for a band of Weezer's age and reputation. The track Blue Dream is a fantastic example of what I'm talking about, as the band directly steal the main riff and verse from Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train and attempt to mesh it with a pretty dour and angsty Weezer rock song. Not only does it not work, but it just appears really tacky and crude and cheap. The last time I saw a major rock band so abhorrently steal material from another major rock band would be Hail to the King from Avenged fucking Sevenfold. Then there's Precious Metal Girl, an acoustic ballad which also acts as the album's closing number. This thing is so goddamn cringeworthy and ridiculous that every time I hear it, all I can picture is like some college jock sitting under a tree attempting to learn guitar for the first time and like some edgy girl comes near and she's like, so you play guitar, right? That's pretty cool. Okay. And then he's like, oh yeah, I totally play guitar. Check this out. You're my precious metal girl. You're cute and edgy and I like your butt. But the award for strangest and most what the fuck moment on the record without question goes to One More Hit. A track that lyrically and musically takes us into much darker territory, the darkest on the entire album in fact, but as a result also paves the way for some of the most questionable material that Weezer have ever made. For one, the track mostly plays out like a Load or Reload era Metallica cut, excluding the breakdown which weirdly feels ripped from like South of Heaven era Slayer. To say that this, along with the dark subject matter, does not mesh with the surprisingly poppy and upbeat melodies is a fucking understatement. It's like the sonic equivalent to somebody actively trying to mix oil and water. But what really shocks me about this number is how utterly awkward and unintentionally creepily sexual it is. As Rivers Cuomo, in a song about drug abuse and drug addiction, may I add, writes, Pump it up into me, please daddy, please daddy, going on to say, could I have one more hit? Wow. Okay. Um. Wow. Did Psychosexual write this? Like, what the actual fuck, guys? Look, lyrics have always been the red-headed middle child of Weezer's music, but between the constant pandering and, and the constant rock and roll fantasy escapism and this incredibly awkward, hypersexual moment, I feel comfortable saying that this is, even by Weezer's standards, a really terribly written album. If I were to review each half of this album individually, the first half would receive a 3.5 out of 5, whereas the second half would probably receive a 2 out of 5, maybe even a 1.5 out of 5. So with that in mind, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math. Let's go right in the goddamn middle with a semi-enthusiastic 2.5 out of 5. I ultimately wish that the album was a lot more consistent all the way through. I wish the lyrics were a lot stronger, a lot less corny, a lot better phrased and executed. And I also wish that Weezer would not so abhorrently steal music from like Ozzy Osbourne and Slayer. But hey, credit where it's due. When the band hits, they hit kind of hard. The album is really well produced. Everything feels sincere even when it maybe shouldn't be. And tracks like Beginning of the End and Hero and I Need Some of That and a few others rank as some of Weezer's catchiest material to date. Let's put it this way. Weezer is successful enough on this album that I wouldn't object to hearing these guys make another album of this type in the near future. They probably won't, mind you, at least not for a while. But if they decided to, I'd be all for it. I'm not really sure how Weezer fans per se are going to respond to this, especially following an album as strong as OK Human, but I will say that anyone looking for some juicy hard rock tunes should at least check out the promo singles or the first half of this album. And 
maybe skip the rest unless you're really fucking bored, I guess. So, uh, my, my camera's being kind of an asshole. It decided to wait until the very end of the review to be an asshole. But, hey, it's fine, I guess. I don't really have much more to say anyway. 2.5 out of 5. It's okay. Um, it wouldn't change my mind if I hated Weezer. It wouldn't change my mind if I loved Weezer. But if I was a fucking nobody just coming in looking for some Van Halen Kiss-style arena rock numbers, I'd be more than satisfied. And that is it! For the Metal Meltdown, I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown-y fucking immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.